Hi, it's Grandma again, and today I have a story about a little bunny. It's called Little Cottontail. Isn't that cute? And I brought a little bunny friend. I know you have bunny friends at your house. See? Hi. We're going to call him Little Cottontail because I don't have a name for him. He's kind of new to me. But he's cute. And just like this bunny in the story. Now, I know Willa has a, two very special bunnies that she loves. So I hope they all enjoy this story. The Little Cottontail was written by a man named Carl Memling around 1960. That's 60 years ago. So this was a book from my family. It's a little, little worn out, but not bad. There's a little tear here and there and a little coloring from a crayon, but otherwise it's good. And I wanted to tell you about Carl Memling because he had a lady named Lillian Obligato draw the pictures for this book. And when Lillian, the artist, got the book, the, the whole story, she read the whole story and she thought it was so sweet and enchanting that she thought, I have to get a rabbit. I need a pet rabbit. And so she did. She got a pet rabbit and the pet rabbit and her, I don't know what she called it, but she, the two of them were very close and really, she really enjoyed her pet. And they said, this description in this book says, you can tell how much she loves rabbits because of her very clever and caring pictures in the book. You can tell she, she really loves bunnies and wants to make them look special. Well, let's look at her pictures. Here there's a picture on this first page of some mice. We'll see them later in the book. There's that little crayon scribble. We're not supposed to color in books, are we? But it was either me or one of my siblings did it many, many, many years ago. We can still read the book though, so let's go. Once there was a little cottontail rabbit who lived in a cozy nest. I want to tell you real quick that I found a nest in uh, one of my garden beds this spring. Every winter when it gets, well I should say fall, when it's becoming winter, I take some dried plants that I have that used to be fresh and now they've dried because the season is getting cold and everything is, the leaves are falling and you know how that is in the fall. Well, I take some of these dried plants and a few leaves and I pack them around some of my bushes, like my rose bushes and hydrangea bushes and a, a few other bushes, so that they'll be protected from some of the cold wind and cold weather in the winter. And when the spring comes and it starts warming up and the plants are ready to grow again and get buds and leaves on the trees, then I don't need that packing around the base of the bush anymore and I take it all off. And I was doing this, oh, about a month or more ago. And when I got to one of my last ones that I was taking the, the plant, the dried flowers and leaves off, I pulled back just a little bit and I saw some furry little balls inside that were tiny baby bunnies. And so I quickly just put that cover back on them, the leaves and, and um, dried flowers and thought that was, it was like the roof of their little house and was keeping them warm and safe. And in the days to come, I saw the little mommy bunny hop over back and forth, and I didn't watch too close because I didn't want to scare her, but I knew she was taking care of her babies. And that's what they like to do. They like to make a warm, furry nest, sometimes in the grass, but they dig a little hole, or sometimes under a bush, you know, someplace that's safe and away from, uh, you know, danger, okay? So once there was this little rabbit, this little cottontail rabbit who lived in a cozy nest and it's often packed with fur all around it like from the mommy. Mother said the little cottontail, when will I grow up? Oh, should we say it a little higher voice? Yeah. Mother, when will I grow up? Soon, said his mother. And there's the sweet mommy talking to the little baby and he's in kind of a little roundish fluffy nest. Mm -hmm. Okay. But she's answering his question. She said, soon you'll grow up, but first, little cottontail, you must leave the nest. Leave the nest, he said. His little round nest was just the right size. It was soft and warm, with a bed made of grass and tufts of fur, like I had mentioned. It was sure a nice nest. A month, oh, let's show you that picture first. You can see some of the fur around there, how soft, Surrounded by grass. It looks pretty cozy, doesn't it? 
while a mother and a father robin peered down at him. Their babies were still too young to leave their nest. They were still teeny. And they wondered what little Cottontail would do. And with a flop and a hop and a hump and a bump, little Cottontail left the nest. So they were neighbors, these robins, and they were listening in. And see their little babies with their mouths open waiting for some worms or bugs or something yummy to eat? Can you do that? <laughs> we used to play we were birds in the nest. At least Willa and I did. And the bunny, Cottontail, did that flop, hop, bump, wump, out of the nest. And then he said, Mama, now am I grown up? He asked. No, not yet, his mother smiled. First, little Cottontail, you must learn to wash yourself. Please teach me, he said. Watch closely, said the mother. A porcupine sitting on a hollow log watched closely too. There's a little porcupine. Porcupines are kind of cute, aren't they? But you know, they have these little quills coming out of them that are kind of pokey and sharp. That keeps them safe from other animals. Well, while the porcupine listened, the mommy said, this is the way you wash yourself early in the morning. You shake your feet one at a time. You shake your feet and then lick them clean one at a time. Well, don't do that. <laughs> Just imagine. And then scrub your face with your little front paws. Have you ever seen a bunny do that? They kind of move their front paws like this and however they can get their hands on there because they're paws, I mean. And then scratch your ears with your big hind paws. Now, that'd be like us using our feet to scratch her ears. That is not very easy. <laughs> but bunnies aren't made like people, are they? They're by, they're, God made them like bunnies, and their feet are different, and they're, these are actually all four of them are their feet. These aren't really their hands, but they're using them sort of like that. And she's washing her face, and Bunny was head shaking his foot, and now he's licking his leg and foot, just like she told him. So she's listening and practicing. Then, she said, bluff all your fur up and lick it clean. And you'll be bright and shining early in the morning. That's like that song, this is the way we take a bath or wash ourselves or whatever early in the morning. Well, little bunny, Cottontail, did every little step, licking, fluffing, wiping face, trying to get behind his ears, the whole bit. He did it, and he said, I can do all of that, and he did. And there were some mice nearby that were watching a deer mouse mommy and her little teeny, teeny little babies. <laughs> and they talk really high. Didn't he do that very well? The deer mouse whispered to her tiny children. They were impressed, but how Cottontail had learned to take a bath so well. Now am I all grown up, asked little Cottontail. Not yet, said his mommy. First, little Cottontail, you must learn what big rabbits eat. Hmm. Out in the meadow, meadow, that's like a big grassy area, all summer long, they eat grass and herbs and lots of green plants. Hmm. So she's showing, even though this is just one mommy teaching one little cottontail, they're showing different pictures of, of bunnies looking around for food out in the grass and among the plants. And over by the farmhouse all summer long they eat carrots and cabbage and nice fresh fruit. Hmm, they must get that from the farmer or the people that live that have gardens, right? That's where they get those because if you ever read the Peter Rabbit story, Peter Rabbit likes to go in a garden and, and kind of take some of those veggies away. <laughs> but bunnies love lettuce, and they love carrots, and they like fruit sometimes, too. And then she said all through the winter, white with snow, they eat buds and twigs and the bark of trees. These are things that big rabbits eat whenever they are hungry. So she was telling him what to do the different seasons, what to look for, where to find it, and what to do when it got cold and the whole bit. So she was a good teacher, wasn't she? And after that, little Cottontail said, I listened closely 
I think I know them. And he did. So they're showing uh, the bunny in the winter looking for some twigs and pieces of the tree that might come off and they can nibble on. And there they are talking. And who's that? A little beaver popped out. And there's our robin friend. And there's mommy bunny and little cottontail. And little cottontail said, I listen closely. I know them. And now am I all grown up, mama? Well, not yet. And that wasn't from mommy. That was from a woodchuck. Oh, I said beaver. Sorry, woodchuck. Popping up from his little burrow. First, you must learn about foxes. Ooh, foxes? What about foxes, said little cottontail? Foxes like to chase rabbits, said his mommy. And they like to catch them for dinner. Oof. You must learn how to tell that a fox is coming. Please, little cottontail, watch very closely. Okay, so he's gradually he's listening. He's like, uh oh, I better learn this. This sounds a little scary. So he is listening to his mama. It's like a good little bunny rabbit. So mommy says, the first thing you have to do is twitch your nose. Now, bunnies, if you've ever seen them, they can actually wiggle their nose without touching it. I have to do like this to make mine move. If you can make yours wiggle, go right ahead. <laughs> but bunnies can do that, and they can sniff really good, just like you sometimes see dogs sniff. And they go, <laughs> and they do it over and over, and they're sniffing the air to see if they can smell an enemy or something that might be a danger. And in this case, we're talking specifically about a fox, because fox, foxes like to chase so she said, this is the way you do it. You sniff really good. Then you cock your ears up so that they're kind of like straight out. And you listen. And you look both ways. Turn your head and listen carefully. Look. Take your time to sniff and hear and see. And that way you'll know whether a bad fox is near. The, rab the robin's listening, and there's that little woodchuck still listening. And there's Mommy being a good teacher. And if the fox comes, this is the way you lay back your ears and bound away. Now, if your ears are up and you're listening, she says, then you lay them back down again. Now, we don't have long ears, so let's show this bunny rabbit. His ears are up. He's listening, he's looking back and forth, and he's using his nose. And he's saying, is there any danger? Is there anything here? And if he sees a, a fox or hears a fox or smells a fox, then he wants to take off. And his ears, the muscles in his ears, bring him down close to his head. Because then when he hops, he can go faster. If his ears are sticking out, the, the wind might take him a little It'd be like an obstacle or something in the way. When he's like this, he's more like, for lack of a better word, like an airplane. He can go faster because he's streamlined at the top. He's more like a, the front of a rocket or an airplane. He can go whoosh and go bump, bump. They jump, don't they? And they can really jump and hop pretty fast. And so that's what the mommy said. If a fox comes this way, you lay back your ears and you bound away. And this is the way you hop. You hop, hop, hop as fast as you can before the fox can get you. You do it a certain way though. You don't just go straight ahead. You take uh, turns. You dodge one way, you twist another way, and you take shortcuts. So people sometimes call that taking a bunny trail. You go dip this way, this way, this way. And if someone's trying to chase a bunny that's going like this and this and changing direction, it'd be hard to follow them, wouldn't it? And that's why they do it. They do it so that they can outsmart foxes and other animals that might chase them. So here's Mommy. She's laid her ears back. And Bunny Cottontail is doing the same thing. And in this picture, she's showing how she does. You can see her little paw prints there on the dirt. She goes one way, then she goes another way, then she circles around, and then she finds a spot and stops and hides it and freezes it like a statue. And that's exactly what she's gonna say. You zigzag and circle and double back on your tracks. 
do you lead the fox, if you can, to a briar patch? You know what that is? It's like a patch of bushes that have thorns on them. Those pokey things that can really hurt if they get in your paw or your arm, legs, I should say, or your body anywhere. They hurt. So you try to lead the, the fox to a briar patch and then as he keeps following you and he keeps running, I don't have another, oh, here, let's see if we have another animal here. We're going to, oh, we're going to pretend that this guy is a fox. Because I think I lost my fox. So here's a bunny running. Here's the fox after it. <laughs> and then it goes this way, and then it goes this way, and then all of a sudden it stops and hides under the bush, and the fox keeps going. And it goes right into a patch of thorns or a briar patch. If you can do it. That's what the mommy said. You do a quick stop there and you hop to the side. You freeze like a statue. Can you do that? Statue. Don't move. And while you're waiting, the fox, fox runs right by, doesn't even see you, and goes right into the bush. And all that fox ever does catch is not a bunny, but a paw full of thorns in the briar patch. Ouchie, ouch. But at least you got away from danger, right? Whew. After that lesson, little Cottontail said, Oh, that's so much to learn, Mama. Though I did listen closely. Now let me see. What came first? Oh, yes. First, I must twitch my nose. And there is Mama and little Bunny. And he's, doing, he's a little scared. But he wants to learn and be just like his mommy and be safe. So little Cottontail twitched his nose to sniff the air for the smell of a fox. And then he cocked his ears. He glanced about. So he looked this way and that way a couple of times and listened real hard with his good ears. There he is, listening and looking. And, oh, look what happened. There's a fox. Yikes. Mother, said little Cottontail, a fox is coming. Into the hollow log sprang the porcupine. Remember that little, oh, the porcupine was earlier. But he's still there and he jumps into this log right here to get away. Let's see if you can see that. And... The deer mice that you saw earlier, the mommy and the little kids, the mommy grabbed her little tiny children and took off. And the woodchuck that had popped out of his burrow went right back into his burrow. That's like a hole in the ground to be safe. And the robin, where do you think they went? Flew away. Gee, 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 like a robin says. Flew away. And little Cottontail and his mother, remember what they do with their ears? They listened and then they pull them back down again so they're close to their face and they take off. And that's what they did. Cottontail and his mother laid back their ears and found it away. And the fox chased after them. Oh dear, thought the mother. What if little Cottontail doesn't remember all I told him? And I showed you here how the animals were hiding. But here comes the fox after mommy and little Cottontail. But little Cottontail, he had been listening good to his mommy and this is what he did. Look, he zigged and he zagged and he circled and then he doubled back on his tracks. So he's going around this way and that way and then, what's happening? He stops suddenly off to the side and freezes like a statue. But the fox didn't see that. He kept running because he thought the bunny went into the bushes. And he's going to run in to those bushes. And what do you think is on those bushes? Ouch! A thorn. A lot of thorns. And he came to that quick, quick stop and he hopped to the side and he froze like a statue, just like I said. And the fox ran by straight into the thorns. A briar patch. <sighs> Mother, said the cottontail, gasping for breath, 
Now am I grown up? Oh, yes, said his mother. Now you are grown up, big cottontail. <laughs> and they are so happy that he's safe and he learned his lesson. And he learned, he listened to his mommy and learned from her and practiced. And there they are cuddling. And they do have cute little cottontails, don't they? They're hugging and up. Oh, over in the background at the top you can see a fox that is not very happy because he has some thorns in him. Ouch. But the mommy and the little, bo little boy bunny are very happy because they're safe. And I hope you enjoyed the story with me and my friend and my pretend fox. It really is quite alright. <laughs> Love you and see you soon.